From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. It has conned dozens of Arizona residents how to recognize this tax season scam, so you won't be next. It expands freedoms for people across the state to get the lab test they need. A new law is looking to help you bypass your physician next time you're in need of a lab test. Mojave County business owners have lost millions of dollars over something that's missing from this water. We'll tell you what our state politicians have done to fix that. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Sonny Scott. And I'm Megan Thompson. Thanks for joining us. Nine days and counting, the tax deadline is looming. Tonight, we're taking a comprehensive look at changes to tax policy and potential pitfalls for taxpayers. Cronkite News reporter Sierra Oshran is live in Washington with a warning from the IRS. The Treasury Department is warning taxpayers not to fall victim to a phone scam, a scam that has already cost some Arizona taxpayers a quarter of a million dollars. It's not a new scam. Someone pretending to be an IRS agent calls a taxpayer and demands immediate payment of their taxes. Experts say don't believe it if you get a call like that. The IRS almost never initiates telephone contact with a taxpayer. If you get a phone call from someone claiming to be an IRS agent, it is almost certainly fake. And in fact, I've gotten them myself. But at least 400,000 people have received such calls as of late last month. And more than 3,100 had fallen victim to the scam for a total loss of $15.6 million, according to the Treasury's Inspector General for Tax Administration. Its report said that 71 Arizona residents reported losing $258,000, the 19th highest among the states. And that's just the people who reported the scam to Treasury. Some say over 400,000, it may be even over 600,000. It's just very hard to know because not all the scams are successful and the phone calls are just coming by the tens if not hundreds of thousands from these thieves. Contact the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration if you don't think you owe taxes. Or if you do think you still owe taxes, ask for a callback number and an employee badge number. But SEP says he expects the scamming to continue as long as we have an overly complex tax code. This is a problem with the tax system, not just the tax bureaucracy. SEP says that some victims will panic when they hear the letters IRS at the end of a phone call, but they shouldn't. If you're still unsure about whether or not the IRS meant to contact you, call 1-800-TAX-1040. Live in Washington, C Washington, D.C., Seer Oshrin, Cronkite News. This tax season is also the first with the insurance reporting requirement under the Affordable Care Act, which requires almost all Americans to carry health insurance or pay a fine. A recent poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that nearly half of Americans were not aware the reporting requirement is now in effect. For most filers, it means checking a box on the tax form stating that they had health insurance all 365 days of 2014. But people who did not have insurance last year will have to pay a tax penalty, $95 per adult and $47.50 per child, or 1% of household income, whichever is greater. That will increase next year to $325 per adult and $161.50 per child, or a 2% of household income for people who don't get coverage this year. Also, people who got financial assistance to pay for their health coverage could end up owing hundreds of dollars if they underestimated their income and got more assistance than they should have. Of more than 120,000 Arizonans who signed up for marketplace coverage last year, about 77% qualified for financial assistance. And taxpayers may be facing another challenge as they hurry to file before the deadline. Your federal tax refund money might take a little longer to get back from the IRS. Budget cuts this year mean that the IRS has to cut back on staff, which could lead to a longer wait for your federal money. But Arizona's Revenue Department says it won't be affected by those cuts. On the state level, you know, the department is not anticipating, you know, any delays or filing issues. Um, we are open for business. For our full multimedia coverage on taxes and pointers for your preparation, you can log on to CronkiteNewsOnline.com. United States Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter will be heading to Asia for his first official trip, but made a pit stop here in Arizona beforehand to speak about national defense and the Asia Pacific. Cronkite News reporter Mackenzie Scott is in the media center with more details on the event. Mackenzie. 
Sunny, Secretary Carter made it clear today to all those who attended that his first priority in his new role is to strengthen the bonds between the USA and the countries of the Asia Pacific. From those in the military to students, the room was packed to hear Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter. But first, Arizona State University President Michael Crow wanted to make the school support of the military clear. We are an all-in national defense university. Make no mistake about it. The theme of Secretary Carter's speech had to do with the importance of the relationship the USA has with the Asia Pacific. A growing Asia Pacific is an enormous opportunity for you and for the country. At one point, he doctor, used his speech to urge Congress to unite and pass a proposed treaty that he believes will greatly like benefit the United States. We need Congress to pass bipartisan trade promotion authority for the president so that he can ensure America gets the best deal in a historic new trade agreement with 11 other Asia-Pacific countries, which is called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. For ASU student and senior airman Jacob Gagno, he found what the secretary had to say yeah, enlightening. It's the first time I've heard so much information about uh, the relationships with Asia. Um, I thought it was very interesting to learn about our goals moving forward with relations and defense. And if Secretary Carter has his way, it won't be the last that Americans hear about the relationship. Secretary Carter stated that if Congress passes the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it means that exports could possibly increase by 123.5 billion dollars in the next decade. Live from the Media Center, Mackenzie Scott, Cronkite News. Thanks, Mackenzie. And tomorrow from Washington, U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan will speak at the Education Innovation Summit here in Phoenix. After that, Duncan will go to the Roosevelt School District's Martin Luther King Jr., Early Child Center, and with, with Governor Doug Ducey. There they will discuss the need for high-quality preschools across the country. Now be sure to tune in to Cronkite News tomorrow at 5 for coverage on this visit. This is a store we have been following since September of last year. Willow Beach Fish Hatchery in northwestern Arizona raises hundreds of thousands of fish for release into the waters of Mojave County. The hatchery faced water supply issues and for months the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Arizona Game and Fish struggled to find a solution. Cronkite News reporter Twilon Nugent went up to Bullhead City to see the resolution of Mojave County's fishery funding problem. I'm standing right on the edge of the Colorado River. Now, the Colorado River supplied water to Willow Beach Fish Hatcher using a pipeline system. And in 2013, that pipeline system broke, seizing operations of raising trout for release at Willow Beach Fish Hatchery. Hey, we really need your guys' help. This is something that I can't do. They're not going to listen to me. They need you. <laughs> Rusty Brown, owner of Rusty's Riviera Marina in Bullhead City, urged state politicians to protect the economy of Mojave County by restocking trout. And those politicians listened. There's an individual here who uh, probably is more affected than anybody and has been more effective, Rusty Braun, who runs his... Uh, Senator John McCain and Congressman Paul Gosar wrote letters to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service back in September of last year. And eight months later, there is finally a solution to save $75 million in economic output in Mojave County. Nothing that was going to be done, so with an unusual combination of state, local, federal officials, so we were able to come together to fix the hatchery. Officials from Mojave County, Arizona Game and Fish, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service formalized an agreement to repair the pipeline that feeds water to Willow Beach Fish Hatchery, which will allow the hatchery to resume operation of raising more than 140,000 trout. The $776,000 repair costs will be split between federal and state wildlife agencies. It's going to affect the whole area and the whole community. We're going to get people from all over the place again. When Mojave County has fish swimming in the lakes and rivers, it means money. Money from sport fishing tournaments, touring anglers, bait and tackle sales, and boat rentals. The economic impact won't be felt just yet, though. There'll be a lull because it'll be a little bit that we have to do in terms of the maintenance that's associated with fixing the, the, the pipe at the, at the hatchery. Although it has been a lengthy process, Rusty is happy to know that his state officials are concerned about the livelihood of his community and his business. These guys really care about this. This is a quiet industry. 
fishing is something of families and communities. The Arizona Game and Fish Department expects those repairs to be finished by fall, and 18 months after those repairs are made, those rainbow trout will be ready to be released into these waters. In Bullhead City, Tweedlaw Nugent, Cronkite News. We have full multimedia coverage on the success of the fish hatchery legislation. Just go to CronkiteNewsOnline.com. A referral may not be a requirement for your future lab tests. That's because of a new law allowing you to bypass a physician in some testing situations. We'll let you know how this affects you. And a bug carrying the plague in Arizona, plus a drug-resistant bacteria spreading across the country. We have more on your health news you need to know. At ASU, we believe the most important semester is the one that starts after you get your diploma, the one called life. So we work hard to help our alumni thrive, teaching them the importance of not only achieving their goals, but exceeding them. With innovative programs that embrace hands-on learning, that encourages real-world growth, our alumni know it can be the education of a lifetime, for a lifetime. For more information, thrive.asu.edu. For veterans, coming back to civilian life brings new challenges, new opportunities, and new stories of remarkable courage and accomplishment. Sharing their stories can help communities understand the veteran experience and through Arizona Veterans Coming Home, eight connects veterans and their families to resources and services for successful transition to civilian life. Explore some of the best resources and opportunities for veterans at azpbs.org slash veterans. Arizona Veterans Coming Home. Connecting Arizona's veterans to the right resources at the right time. Throughout its history, Arizona PBS and volunteers have enjoyed a rich and rewarding partnership. Whether answering phones during our pledge campaigns, stuffing envelopes, or assisting with special events, volunteering at 8 is fun and provides excellent work experience, team building for a group, and a sense of community involvement and importance. If you would like to volunteer at 8, or if you have dropped off our mailing list, we encourage you to call the number on your screen or go online at azpbs.org forward slash volunteer. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Woodbeck. Adverse childhood experiences can last a lifetime, but they don't have to. You can help break this cycle of neglect and abuse. Visit azpbs.org slash strongkids. Today, Governor Doug Ducey signed a law that allows patients to request testing without having to go to a doctor for approval. Cronkite News reporter Katrina Arroyo spoke with one physician who believes this new law will help her patients. Dr. Kristen Bishop believes people should know what is going on with their health care. I think it is perfectly aligned with naturopathic medicine because we're all about prevention and empowering people to know about their health care. So I'm very excited that this bill went through today because it is perfectly aligned with what we do. Governor Doug Ducey signed HB 2645 into law earlier this morning. He believes, along with the rest of the staff at Theranos, this new law will serve as a model for the rest of the nation. My priority is the same. Put more opportunities and greater freedom within reach of all of our citizens. And this law does that. This law is based off a health care system that is based on early detection for patients. A patient will no longer wait to see a physician to receive a referral to get lab work done. Patients will be able to take control and fully engage themselves in the lab testing process, from what's being done to financial aspects. That understanding will begin to create pressure in the market to drive down the cost so that every person regardless of what kind of insurance they have or still today don't have, can begin to afford the ability to get a test done. For Dr. Bishop, she enjoys the transparency this new law will provide to her patients. I've already been using Theranos a lot because of the pricing. I'm all about transparency in medicine and free market. People should have a choice in the type of provider they want to use. Until the law takes effect in July, patients will have to get a referral from their physician before they can go get lab work done. In Phoenix, Katrina Arroyos, Cronkite News. For citizens who don't have health insurance, this new law will provide them the transparency to find a provider who can financially meet their needs. The CDC says a new drug-resistant res strain of the bacteria Shingella is spreading around the country through international travelers. The bacteria causes a disease called shingalosis. There were 729 cases of shingalosis reported in Arizona in 2006. 
It spread from sharing contaminated food and drinks with an infected person and only lasts four to seven days. Symptoms include fever, diarrhea, nausea, and stomach cramps. Although there is no vaccine for shingleosis, the Center for Disease Control says there are preventative measures you can take, such as washing your hands with soap carefully and frequently, especially after going to the bathroom, after changing diapers, and before preparing foods or beverages. Disposing of soiled diapers properly and disinfecting diaper changing areas after use. Avoid drinking pool water and supervising hand washing of toddlers and small children after they use the toilet. County officials are taking precautions after finding fleas testing positive for plague. Public health officials collected the fleas around trails in the popular hiking area after noticing some prairie dogs were dying off. The plagued fleas were collected in Picture Canyon northeast of Flagstaff and are the first sign of plague activity in the county since last September in Denny Park. Officials are advising residents to protect themselves by using insect repellent and by avoiding the handling of sick or dead animals. Symptoms of plague appear within two to six days after initial exposure. They include fever, chills, swollen lift glands and muscle pain. The County Public Health Services District is conducting additional tests and disinfecting prairie dog burrows. Aside from those fleas, northern Arizona is looking great when it comes to weather. Now let's go to Katrina Arroyos with a check of your forecast. Katrina. Well, those above average temperatures of the 90s are a thing of the past. As you can see here in the valley, we are currently at 84 degrees with a 5% humidity and dew point at 6 degrees. Wind speeds are the topic of today. As you can see throughout the state, we have a variety of wind speeds much higher than usual. That's due to a low pressure system making its way eastward throughout the state. Here in the valley, we are at 14 miles an hour. Yuma, the lowest wind speed of the um, state at 10 miles an hour. Up north, Flagstaff and the Grand Canyon experiencing wind speeds in and around 26 miles an hour and along with the wind speeds it's slightly dropping our temperatures as you can see down in Tucson they're at 85 degrees Yuma usually the hottest city in the state is at 80 degrees up north in the 50s and 70s 58 at the Grand Canyon 73 in Page and 71 in Winslow we're going to cool off later on going into tonight by 6 p.m. we'll hit 81 degrees and as the sun sets and that nighttime sky is out will drop to 72 degrees and by 10 p.m. we'll be at 66 degrees. Now looking on out at your five day forecast as you can see Tuesday and Wednesday that's when that low pressure system is going to be present will drop to 75 degrees on Wednesday but as that low pressure system moves out we'll start increasing our temperatures 80 degrees on Thursday up to 86 on Friday and in and around the mid 80s on Saturday at 85 degrees all with clear sunny skies. For Cronkite Weather, I'm Katrina Arroyos. In the wake of the mass shooting incident, Mesa law enforcement will be seeing some changes. Find out what the new leadership is planning to keep the city safer. In a year, this Mesa Macy's could be your new office after the vacant store is repurposed to accommodate new tenants. Throughout its history, Arizona PBS and volunteers have enjoyed a rich and rewarding partnership. Whether answering phones during our pledge campaigns, stuffing envelopes, or assisting with special events, volunteering at 8 is fun and provides excellent work experience, team building for a group, and a sense of community involvement and importance. If you would like to volunteer at 8 or if you have dropped off our mailing list, we encourage you to call the number on your screen or go online at azpbs.org forward slash volunteer. Thank you. The easiest and best way to support 8 Arizona PBS is by becoming a sustaining member. Your monthly contribution of $5 or more comes directly from your bank account or credit card, so you know your membership is always current. It also means no more renewal notices in your mailbox. So more of your dollars go to the programs you love. It's convenient for you, greener for us, and better for the planet. Become a sustaining member today. When you want to be more connected, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us online. Explore worlds of wonder here on 8 Arizona PBS, a viewer supported community service of Arizona State University. The city of Mesa now has a new police chief, but he's already been in the role. 
current current Mesa interim police chief John Mesa will take over full time. Mesa was appointed interim police chief in February. That's when Chief Frank Milstead was selected by Governor Doug Ducey as the new director of Arizona's Department of Public Safety. Chief Mesa shared his top priorities for the police department. Uh, extensive good crime fighting and community engagement and that's how we're going to progress as a police department and maintain our leadership uh, in the state as, as, as the best organization when it comes to law enforcement. Chief Meza has been with the city of Mesa for more than 28 years, serving as a lieutenant for six years and a surgeon, sergeant for seven. A Valley Mall is getting a new lease on life. The Fiesta Mall has been around for 35 years. It's seen its fair share of changes, but the most recent change coming to the retail space is one many might not have expected. Cronkite News reporter Laura Spazzato joins us from the broadcast center to tell us more about this project. Laura? The city of Mesa announced that the vacant Macy's building in the Fiesta Mall will be getting some new tenants next year, but they won't be your typical mall occupants. Plans to repurpose spaces like this are being considered by malls all around the country. I'm proud of uh, the progress that we're making as a community. The Fiesta Mall in Mesa has been missing one of its anchor stores since early 2014. The building that housed a department store has been sitting vacant during that time. But a recent sales agreement between Macy's Incorporated and Verta Fiesta LLC will change that. Over the last year and a half, we have been studying the Fiesta District and more specifically the Fiesta Mall. Macy's sold the space so that Verde Fiesta could build the Fiesta Corporate Campus. It's an office center that Verde Fiesta says will house about 1,300 employees. You would then end up with this live, uh, work, live, and uh, play lifestyle that's so popular today. Economist Mark Stapp says malls were made for a repurposed opportunity. Because remember, malls were typically built it, where there was good regional accessibility. So you take that regional accessibility and go, okay, what other services are now needed and can we more effectively provide them? The Fiesta Mall isn't the only mall having to deal with store losses. Macy's Incorporated has announced they will be shutting down a total of 14 stores in the country during the next year, including the one at Metro Center in Phoenix. Things are evolving and certain properties um, are becoming obsolete for various reasons. The mayor of Mesa says he hopes the Fiesta corporate campus will help initiate creative solutions for future mall vacancies. The economic activity that comes out of that area and that intersection uh, has typically led our community. The city of Mesa says construction is set to begin this fall and the project is expected to take about 24 months to complete. Live in the broadcast center, Laura Spazzato, Cronkite News. Now listen up, baseball fans. It's opening day at the ballpark. Coming up on Cronkite News, the Diamondbacks are already coming in at last place on one list, but we guarantee that this ranking is something to cheer about. For veterans, coming back to civilian life brings new challenges, new opportunities, and new stories of remarkable courage and accomplishment. Sharing their stories can help communities understand the veteran experience and through Arizona Veterans Coming Home, Eight connects veterans and their families to resources and services for a successful transition to civilian life. Explore some of the best resources and opportunities for veterans at azpbs.org slash veterans. Arizona Veterans Coming Home. Connecting Arizona's veterans to the right resources at the right time. Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Woodbeck. Adverse childhood experiences can last a lifetime but they don't have to. You can help break this cycle of neglect and abuse. Visit azpbs.org slash strongkids. Cronkite News is a real newsroom with real stories told by real reporters. Bringing you the latest in all news, all Arizona. Live in Yuma. Live in Globe. Reporting live in Phoenix. Live at the Republican headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Cronkite News directly connects the nation's capital to yours. While Arizonans anxiously await the outcome. I spoke to Congresswoman Kirkpatrick. Live in Washington, D.C., Stephen Hicks, Cronkite News. Now airing on 8HD, this is Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to join the Arizona PBS News Block here on 8HD. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. Coming up after Cronkite News, it's Arizona Horizon. We'll hear about the legislative session's impact on cities and towns, and we'll learn about a science fiction genre focused on the environment. That's next on Arizona Horizon. 
I'm Hari Srinivasan. On the next news hour, a new report on what went wrong with Rolling Stone's reporting on a UVA rape case. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. It's only opening day, but the Arizona Diamondbacks are already on a streak. That team is touted at the best in the league for the fan value for the ninth consecutive season. The Diamondbacks have the lowest fan cost index in the league, a formula based upon a typical bar ballpark outing for a family of four, including tickets, parking, two beers, food and drinks. Even two hats is only $126.89. To break that down for you, Four drinks, that's $4 for a beer, $1.50 for a soft drink, $2.75 for a hot dog, $10 for parking, and $9.99 for a baseball cap. Number one on that list, the Boston Red Sox with a fan cost index of $350.86. That's $200 more than the typical family outing to a D-backs game at Chase Field. And if you plan to head out to the game this season, an average ticket will cost you around $18. But if you opt for the average premium seating, expect to pay over $52 for that. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Find top Arizona stories anytime at cronkitenewsonline.com.